Hey, welcome back to Pistons Repair Shop. Not in the shop, we're actually down in the, what I call the, the gear room, down in the basement where we do some editing, actually most of it's on my phone. Um, it's where we record podcasts, when we're actually doing podcasts, which I haven't done in forever. Anyway, if you're just checking the channel out because of all the brand tool coverage, thanks for checking it out. I hope you uh, can find something you like here. Um, tons of playlists of all the projects you've been on. You can see it all. Um, there'll be something, there's something for everybody, as long as you like antique tractors and tractor pulls and working on a junk truck and that kind of stuff, we got you covered. Anyway, so after this weekend, um, after the videos have all been up, I kind of thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun to do is a little top 10, just a little bit of a, what I, what I, the stuff that I picked, took away from the show that was unique, different, um, maybe a little bit special. So let's get on with it. Let's, let's, let's see what the top 10 are. So Bibster's top 10 from Rantoul 2021. Number 10, there was a dueled up 990 the first day. Oh, anytime that style of tractor is dueled up, you don't see it very often. Just looks sweet. That thing was a tank. It looked like a tank. Should look like it needed to have a machine gun across the across the hood of that thing going into battle. Powered by a GM diesel, it was screaming when it was working in the field. I didn't get a video working in the field, but we did a quick little drive around. Dad and I are drooling, so you'll enjoy that. That's number 10. All right, in the number nine spot is going to be the turbine-powered John Deere B. You heard me right. There was a whole repower section, and there was all of the normal culprits. There was Cummins powered. There was 903 Cummins and big stuff. There was Detroit powered John Deere's, all that stuff. And then at the end of the line was a turbine powered John Deere B. You got to check it out. This thing was so cool and how it was built. Um, definitely. I would love, I wanted to meet the guy who owned it because that would have been so cool. So if you know him or something, or if you know any more information about it, put it in the comments. I want to know everything about that thing. All right, number eight is going to be the International 303 Combine. Now, this is a cool story. Guy um, commented on a video a couple weeks ago that I said, hey, I'm looking at ideas for what to do at Tool for videos. And he said, hey, I got this 303 Combine with a cab on it. Check it out. And that's kind of all he really said about it. He had said some of the other tractors there, which I wasn't able to actually find, but... There's so much going on. But he, uh, so I met him, his dad, and his actual son. It was his first time he got to come to the trip, uh, come to the come to the show. And this 303's got a bunch of, they bought it for 200 bucks years ago, a few years ago, maybe six, seven years ago. Did a bunch of work on it, got it together, everything from changing out so they can do quick attach for the head. They put a bigger auger on it. There's parts from a 615 in there. Really made this thing. They sped up different things inside of it to make this thing a little hot rod is what I thought. Kind of pretty much what it was. They were able to shell corn at five mile an hour, over five mile an hour, which if you've been to Rantoul, you know, there's speed limits every 13 feet that say the speed limit is five. So he was claimed to fame was he broke the speed limit shelling corn. So here's a couple of clips of that. The number seven spot. One of the biggest engines there that wasn't in a tractor, actually there was bigger engines there probably, but one of the coolest engines there was a big stationary international UD24. Um, and dad and I kind of went up on that and I was making jokes about how I could put it in my farm while it's still farm stock, right? Um, that's what's cool about the show is there's stuff you're gonna see there you won't see anywhere else. You know, The number six spot is gonna be the both NA classes on Friday night at the tractor pull. Now they do big tractor pulls every night um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday night's not. They don't have a sanctioning body come in, but they kind of do their own thing. Friday night, Saturday night, they have sanctioning bodies come in. Well, there's two sanctioning bodies on Friday night. Both had an NA diesel class, which is something that you don't always see at, um, you don't always see when you go to tractor pull. And NA diesel, obviously naturally aspirated, is kind of the rarity in, in, in tractor pulls. So when you think about tractor pulls, think about you know, turbos you're measuring with tape measures or multiple turbos. and. The things are screaming down the track. You can just hear all the boosts in the world. The black smoke's getting shot 300 feet in the air. And as soon as that tractor, a lot of times, as soon as it starts to come under those turbos, it goes and shuts down. Well, you go to NA, a giant cubic inch, and they just love and love and love. And those things were grunting. And so there was, I was able to get, they were running both the glasses on full tracks. So at one point there was a white on one side, olive on the other. So obviously that's the thing you're gonna see. So just hear those things just brought down. Again, that's Friday night's tractor pull video. So if you wanna see more of that, check that out. But, uh, number five was that 8600, that 9600 Ford 
um, both hooked up to four bottom semi-mounted plows. There's just something about that. That era Ford tractor just, it looks right. You know, there's certain tractors that no matter what brand you like, you that that's a tractor that always looks good you know you can be an oliver guy you can be a formal guy like yours truly and you still like the look of a 4020 doesn't matter and those two tractors they both they just have that right muscle tractor beefy look that just they just look like. all right number four this one for all the oliver guys um on all the facebook pages there was everywhere before i got there there was there was a there was a tandem 880 setup the story was it was built in the early 60s, ran for a few years, and then got retired, basically. But left, to, supposedly when it got retired, it got left together, which is really, that's where the story, there's got to be more to it, and I didn't know it all, and if you can, put down in the comments if you know more about it. But um, it was built in the 60s, all, again, one of those, just like the turbine tractor before, just like more to come in this list. Um, farmer back in the day needed a bigger tractor didn't have one couldn't find one there wasn't one being made at the time made and that thing was plowing all weekend long the, if there were there were tractors out doing field demonstrations it was always there all right number three now this was the first time that dad and i found a tractor driving around and we had to chase it down to see what it was and this was the international turbine tractor yes another turbine tractor um, you can hear it running everywhere. Supposedly it was built off of the blueprints of the original ones. It's not the actual original ones, but you'll see it here driving around. Super cool to see. Number three. All right, number two, partially for my brother-in-law who has an Alice 7000, partially for my buddy Flegel who is a big Alice guy, and partially because it is so sweet. It was, there was a 7000 open station that was cruising along. Dad and I, you know, we know my brother-in-law is building a uh, 7000 open station right now. And uh, sometime I'll try and get a video of that thing. It's looking really cool. Uh, and so we were, we saw it driving to the same country. Hey, chase that down, chase that down. We go driving up to it. As we get pulling next to it, I look over and realize it's not a 301 in that. That thing is coming swapped. 6BT of Fury with a big old P pump on it. And uh, so I got a couple clips of it. We'll show you a little bit here. That, I, yeah, I was just, that was just flat out clean install didn't look like i mean if it wasn't you know you could tell when you got up to it, it was a cummins but if you were just someone off the street you would think that that was the, that was the right engine for it because everything was really clean it wasn't hacked in there at all it looked really good so check that out all right before we get to the number one because that was number two um let's do a couple honorable mentions so we're going to show those in succession so i'm gonna talk about them now the one is the 95 john deere four row tracked combine you heard that right it was a four row with they look like it looked like two two rows um because they could and it was on tracks now i in the comments on the video when i, I said like that's be custom right so i said no it was factory but very rare the deal was and again it's it's the internet so take it at with the grain of salt or at least that they had heard was that international came out with the four row John Deere freaked out, like, oh, no, here we go. I mean, again, think about time. Now we're talking about 12 and 16 rows. And anyway, they were, John Deere needed to come up with something quick. That was their solution to kind of get them, at least in that market, well, they to, for a little bit until they could come up with their own head. So that tractor was really cool. And it was really cool to see that kind of stuff working in the field. And the number, the other honorable mention spot you'll see is that one row corn picker that had its own wagon on it. Most of the time when you're picking corn, you have your, you know, you're, you're throwing the ears of corn into a wagon behind you. This thing had this fancy conveyor belt system that dumped them up ahead, up on top. And then when you would get stopped, it would open the side up and dump it into a waiting wagon. Crazy looking thing. Definitely one of those that there's a reason why it didn't catch on, probably. But um, again, a unique piece. You only see it shows like this. So check those two out. All right, last number one clip by the one of the moments that was just really neat was Sherry Schaefer's Super 77 with a 251 Detroit diesel. She just picked this up um, the week before, which there was the National Oliver Show in Michigan um, for the for the club. So I'm assuming there met the person there. But either way, it was it's it's in rough shape now. I mean, we're close. It looks like my Super 88 currently. But um, this is a really cool piece. Another one of those, like a lot of other things on this list, 
someone needed a, you know, they had a tractor, maybe they had a chassis. It looked like it was a municipality owned at one point. They had a chassis. Maybe that motor blew up in a super. Maybe whatever happened, they had this other engine. They said, we could probably make this work. They made it work. And it, and it, and it ran. Drove around. Made a lot of noise. It was a Detroit. They all do that. Um, just something that I think was really cool. So that's my number one slot. Now, when we get when after we show that, I'm gonna give you guys a little teaser here. Um, I work for Midwest Super Cub as my day job, and we build high performance long tractor engines, coal, singles, and twin coalers. We build some brigs for mud boat applications, all sorts of cool stuff. If you ever want to know any more about that? Just ask me. But before I got started there. Brian um, at work and my boss Julian decided to build a half scale 4020. I didn't have any part to do with this. So if it looks really cool, it's because I didn't touch it. Um, and we're getting ready to sell at the Mecham sale this fall, lot number S75 on Saturday. Check it out. Um, all of the profits from this sale will go to an FFA local chapter. So if whoever's a purchaser of it, they get to say who gets what chapter of FFA gets the money. So you know, if you want to support your your local FFA, you could buy the tractor, and you could and the check will go to them, not just you know some FFA that you can't see. You know, the kids in your community being affected by. Um, so I, there's a couple. There's about a minute and a half clip of that thing driving around and doing school stuff. So check that out. I'll tell that at the end. If you got any more questions about that? I'll put a link in the description for the Mecham auction. But again, thanks for checking the channel out, and. Um, it's really been fun to watch those last couple of days of just everything kind of blowing up. And I hope you find something else on the channel you like. And like I said, we'll be back working in the garage real soon. Bye. Well, there'll be clips playing, but you know what I'm saying. We'll see you in the next one.